Twilight breeze blows the scent of early summer around my head while I wait for Lily. Small white clouds litter the sky, breaking up the monotony of the blue. Hisao, are you here? His voice lilts on the breeze, as if they were one and the same thing. I stop gazing into the sky to examine Lily. Oh, sup? With a peach off the shoulder sweater and a tan ankle length shirt skirt. In addition to tan sandals. She's quite a nice sight. Yeah, I'm over here, Lily, near the gate. Were you able to sneak away from Hanako? Yes, it's not uncommon for me to go out during weekends, so I don't think she had noticed anything suspicious. That and uh she has someone she sees. Lily purses her lips, as if maybe she shouldn't have continued. I find it a little hard to believe. Hanako's seeing someone? Really? <laughs> no, it's just she sees a therapist every so often on weekends. Oh, well, that does make a lot of sense. Lily rubs her arm uncomfortably, and after one look at a troubled expression, I quickly move to change the topic away from Hanako, but to Hanako. Huh. Yes? I was just wondering. You can get around the city on your own. Lily sighs at my consternation surrounding the topic of her blindness. I'm my own worst enemy sometimes. <sighs> I can, yes. It's easy when I'm out with a friend or my sister, though. I wonder how Lily gets along with her sister. Being an only child, it's hard to imagine what having a sibling would be like. So, it makes me a little envious of her. I have five brothers, so, uh, not too envious. I mean, I'm, I've never had a sister. Obviously, I never will, so, I don't know. Right, uh, well then, the bus arrives in a few minutes, so we should probably get a move on. Indeed, it is a long wait if we miss this one. With that, we set off for the bus stop on the hill. It's only a small distance from the school gate, so it's very convenient. It's a nice view from here. Coming from the city, I never really got to see scenery like this, let alone on a daily basis. He saw why? Eh. <sighs> mm, this area is nice for me as well. It's tranquil, and away from the noises and smells of the city. Lily's head perks up in a trademark gesture of hers, signifying that she's caught a sound. Oh, here comes the bus. I look down the road to see the bus trundling up the hill. Her hearing is quite a useful tool. The bus only takes a short while to reach the bus stop, forcing its way up the road. And within a minute, we're on our way to the city. Woot woot. Walking around the city, I feel a distinct nostalgia. The smells, the traffic, the tall buildings everywhere. It's a lot like my native city, save for the raised walkways. It feels a little weird, walking around a city as casually as I would in a park, with cars rushing around underneath me. As I'm busily pondering the engineering marvel that is raised walkway, I get a surprise. It takes me a moment for me to realize that Leah's wrapped her arm around mine, extending a cane in front of her with her other hand. For a moment, I'm startled, but I managed to keep enough of a lid on it for Lily not to notice. While it's not the first time that Lily's relied on me for guidance, she'd only held on my, to my sleeve's cup before. It's logical that it would be easy for her to navigate a crowded and complex area such as the city while securely linked, but I'm far from being as used to this kind of contact as Lily is. Finally realizing that growing silence between us as Lily waits for me to get moving, I quickly kick my brain to gear. You know, I was kind of surprised that Hanko likes to sing. You ever heard her do that before? And I have indeed. We've been to karaoke sessions several times, along with my sister. I can't say I take to the activity much, but the other two like it. Maybe Hanako doing karaoke is more fitting than I initially thought. Just her and those she knows, all alone in a little room. It'd give her a rare chance to let her guard down with nobody else there to judge her. It'd be nice to bring her to town for a karaoke birthday party if she likes doing it. Hmm. I'm not sure she would do very well with the excitement. I move to protest, but her face shows that she's mulling the proposal over some more. It takes quite some time for her to come to a conclusion. Then again, the best thing we can do for Hanako at this point is try to create some pleasant birthday memories. Continually treating her as if she's a normal won't help. I think you're right. If she has something to remember apart from loss, then maybe she'll come around. If we bought her something nice that she could see every day, then maybe she'd be able to take her mind off the past and remember that she has friends. In any case, I think Hanako can handle something like this. In the time I've spent beside her, I've learned that she isn't quite as frightfully fragile as I first thought she was. So, shall we be off then? I'm not really sure the layout of this area. Very well. I might like to suggest having something to eat first. Suddenly no music. And I haven't either. So that sounds like a good plan. <laughs> Make sure you choose a nice place to sell. She gives a teasing smile. One that makes me smile reflexively in response, even if she can't see that. I'll make very sure I do. Don't worry about that. Alright, where are we going, Sal? Let's go. Once inside, I order two slices of pie and accompanying cups of tea and take them back to our table. We really like pie, don't we? Pie is a dessert, right? It's not really, like, a meal, is it? Unless we're having, like, a meat pie or something. I don't think. I've never... I don't eat pie. I don't like pie. Any pie, really. Except pizza pie, I guess. Maybe cake? Cake counts as a pie, right? Quiche? Does quiche count as a pie? Everything's a pie, isn't it? I don't know. If it's just in, like, a circle? Whatever. 
I'd peg the cafe as a type to appeal to Lily, small and quiet, but well kept and somewhat upscale. Going by the dainty smile she wears, I generally know if it shows right. It's very, very rare not to see her smiling, after all. Nevertheless, I take a seat next to her at one of the corner tables and lay down our small meals. Lily gingerly brings her head over the slice of pie placed in front of her, delicately taking in the aroma. A lemon pie, is it? Thank you, Sal. No problem. She's just next to it, so be careful not to knock it over. Ah, uh, Sal. She nods appreciatively, but judging from the slightly weak smile she has, the warning wasn't really necessary. I suppose the sound was just dropped to its position. We're both tucking to our food without further ado, both of us remaining largely silent as we do so. Lily isn't the type to appreciate discussion while eating, so I can't say I like it either. And I can't say I like it either. Eventually, we both finish our meals, and the last of our teacups falls in short order. Lily is the first to break the silence. That was very nice. I must say, you've chosen quite well, Sal. That was the first time I've really had much of a look around the city, so all I could really do is choose somewhere that looked nice. Ah, fuck, sorry. <laughs> I feel really bad about inadvertently bringing up the subject of Cypher Lily, but she doesn't appear to mind much. Quite the opposite. She almost looks amused by my awkward attempt at an apology. You are thoughtful, Sal. But, uh, sometimes I fear that it gets the better of you. There's no need to change your speech on my account. Lily truly is pretty comfortable in dealing with her condition. I still hasten to change the subject, as I can't really say that I share confidence in the matter. Have you, uh, lived here very long? Seems like you'd have this place very well sorted out. I fucked that up so hard. Whatever. She quickly waves her hand in front of her face to dismiss the notion. It's nothing like that. I've attempted Yamaku since the start of high school, but I didn't walk around the city very much because Akira and my sister picked me up and dropped me off. Oh right, you mentioned not living to the dormitories until recently. It's quite a surprise. I just assumed that she'd been living here since she had entering Yamaku at least, which would give her a few years here. I've lived with my family for most of my life. Then I was just together with my sister, with my family having moved to Iverness long before, and Akira working long hours. I ended up having to move. Iverness? Isn't that somewhere in Scotland? Oh, did I not tell you? My family currently lives in Scotland, the birthplace of my mother. My father's side is mainly Japanese, though. Huh. The question of what gave Lily her looks did cross my mind every now and again, but I never thought to ask. The answer to that, then. Scottish. 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 To be honest, I never guessed. Considering you have no accent, I'm guessing you were born here. For the marks, I'm thankful for my heritage, though, as without it, I'd likely not have been taught English so early in my life. And what of you, Sal? And what about me? She gives a moment's thought. She probably should have thought of what to ask me before switching the topic. I'll go with, uh, what are your plans for the future? To be honest, I haven't thought about that much recently. After my accident and subsequent months in the hospital, enjoying my life here with you and Hanukkah has been enough for me. In fact, I don't think I've thought about a future for some time now. It seems almost futile. This is your last year of school. After this, you will have to find some way to fend for yourself one way or another. It's not like I don't know that. I just haven't put much thought into it since then. She opens her mouth to continue, but she gives a small sigh instead. She seemed to have realized that she doesn't know enough about my situation to go into too deeply about this. Well, we all have our own pace. I just hope you'll take any chance to see. I understand. I'll think about it. As we walk back out into the city, Lily takes hold of my arm once again. So, did you get any good ideas for presents? Honest, no. I've never been very good at picking them. As absurd as it sounds, perhaps we should just look around? Hearing Lily utter those words throws me for a moment. Uh, right. How do we do that? <laughs> That's just the reaction I was expecting. It's simple. You can go window shopping and just tell me what's around. If something interesting comes up, then we might get an idea. Right. So not so sure about this, but I'll take your word for it. I think we'll manage. Hanako, my sister, and I managed to do it well enough. All right. With Lily's simplistic and rather optimistic statement, we set off into the shopping district of the city, and I start describing everything I see to Lily. It's hard to think of Hanako going window shopping. She doesn't feel like the type to place much stock in fashion, nor have I noticed her reading magazines or the like. In fact, all I've ever seen her really do as a hobby is read books. There's a houseware shop just ahead. Looks like it's mostly crockery, though. Hmm. I can't think that she'd have much of a need for that. And what type of message would that send to her? Ah, uh, cook more food? Not such a bad idea, maybe. Sometimes it's best to leave these things alone, Hassel. Once again, I get the feeling that Hanako's exploits in the kitchen aren't always successful. Well, you must have had to help her with that sometimes. Let's see, next along is a bookshop. That seems to be a good one, she's always reading. Yes, but there's a few problems with books. 
I'm not quite sure what she has and hasn't read. What about a gift card, then? <sighs> There's nothing as impersonal as giving someone a gift card. It's like saying, I don't know enough about you to work out what you like. I always thought of it making sure they got what they wanted. <sighs> giving people is supposed to show them a level of affection you have for them. If you can't decide on a simple gift for them, then how much could you think of them? Right, right, no gift cards. Lily really seems overly passionate about this, but I can see your point. If you're going to get something for someone, then you should really put a little thought into it. If I want to get something good for Hanako, that reminds her of us every day, then we'll go to the gift card. In that case, what did you get Hanako last year? A porcelain doll. I thought if she had someone to talk to, it might help her ease her pain. A doll isn't ever going to criticize her, after all. So, should I be looking for a doll shop? If you could be so kind as to keep a lookout for one, I'd be grateful. Well, where would you buy it last year? Sounds good to me. I wish you'd mentioned it earlier. But if I did that, then you wouldn't have started thinking for yourself, would you? Once again, Lily has a point. My brain is currently analyzing every story pass for gift options. If Lily had mentioned a doll shop to begin with, I wouldn't have thought of anything else. We wander through the city streets, but seem unable to find anything that resembles a doll shop, or anything that I consider a fitting present. So active searching is starting to clear my head. The events of last week are starting to fade away, and I'm looking forward to giving Hanako a gift. If I can find one, that is. This is hopeless. I thought we'd be able to find something in the city for sure, and I'm sure we've walked down the street at least once before. That almost sounds like you're giving up, Sal. I'm not, but it's a lot harder than I thought. Try not to be so restricted in your thinking. Maybe we should actually go into some shops and have a look around. That might work. We're very really good at window shopping. Leo and I circle around the city streets once more, this time popping into stores that catch our attention. In the end, though, nothing comes up as especially appropriate. Hanako's tastes are often quite hard to pin down at the best of times. Next door, intensely private nature. And those days that we do know are hard to accommodate. <sighs> Maybe take a break for a moment? I'm a bit exhausted. I agree and leave Lily to resting as a railing while I go get a couple drinks from a nearby vending machine. After walking to the vending machine and grabbing myself some lemonade, I find myself at a bit of a loss. Not really knowing Lily's taste, I decide to take a dress and grab something that seems a little girly, but not too weird. Strawberry flavored milk. Back. Walk up to her and place the car in into her outstretched hands, making sure she has a grip on it before letting go. She feels out its contours before opening it, and taking a very tentative sip, her approving smile afterwards, telling me I made the right choice. We both rest and have a quiet drink for a few minutes. After a familiar soft ringing begins to sound from Lily's side, she quickly apologizes as her hand goes into her pocket, pulling out her mobile phone. Do you mind if I take this? It's fine, don't worry. She nods me in thanks before turning away and flipping the phone open, bringing it to the side of her face as she picks up her call. Going by the tone of Lily's voice, the person on the other end is no doubt a friend of some other. I should know that their conversation pretty quickly, as snippets that Lily says make it sound a little more than gossip. Without much to do, I find myself watching Lily. She really is a pretty girl, which would hardly hurt her popularity in the school. It's interesting just how much Hanako and Lily contrast with each other, in both personality and appearance. For a few minutes, I just lean back and drink, watching her. Before long, Lily says her goodbyes to the person she's talking to and hangs up. Placing your phone back in a pocket, and leaning back against the railings before. This is the same thing I had, the same problem I had with Blonde in, uh, in Rebirth 3. Why is your smile on the side of your face? You realize if you were facing forward, your smile would be on the left... Right side of your face. Right over here, but... Left over here, but on the right side of your face. Like, right now. Sorry, just a friend from class. I take one final swig from my can before throwing into the bin. Lily gives him a card to throw away soon after, finishing it off relatively quickly. Seemed to have a lot of friends. Oh? Lily waits for me to continue. Her interest peaked. I was just thinking that you and Hanako contrast really heavily. It's hard to imagine Hanako doing a lot of things you do, or knowing the people you know. You seem to think about Hanako quite a bit. I don't know, it's just... She's mysterious, I guess. I kind of want to know more about her, which isn't that easy. It almost sounds like you're doubting your relationship to her. I don't think it's that. I just want to do more for her. Being her friend and all, I don't really even know if she, how she sees me. The statement seems to interest Lily quite a bit. I wonder if Hanako said anything about me to Lily during her conversations. I'm about to ask what's on her mind as she picks herself up from the railing. Shall we be off then? Her voice and expression show that she's playing games with me. Lily knows damn well that she's leaving me hanging. With a sigh, I pick myself up off the railing as well and have a brief look around. We have stuff to do, so I'll try to get back to her about this later. Tucked in between a newsstand and a convenience store is a small shop. The sign above the door reads, Othello's Antiques and Decorative English Script. 
It'd be easy to miss if we were walking along the street, but since we're stationary and purposely looking around, it's just noticeable. Say, Lily, that doll you got Hanukkah, was it new? Mm, well, yes, but I'm not quite sure I know what you mean. I think I found a shop. It's across the road. Oh, what is it? Some kind of toy shop? It's an antique shop. I think it's probably going to be our best bet. Really? I didn't even know we had one of those near here. Neither did I. I missed it the first time we went by here. It's pretty well hidden. Well then, it can't hurt to check. Inspired by this new find, we quickly dodged ourselves off and headed towards the store. This hand finding his way to my elbow for guidance. Store has a strange, musky scent to it. If the layout is more like a garage than a store, things are strewn around the floor without any immediate semblance of order. Shopkeeper gives us an almost bored look through his particularly small eyes. His face looks weary and tired, and his dress style is distinctly anachronistic. He gives us a polite nod of welcome before going back to his book. I guess that's Othello. Lily tightly holds onto my arm, and I find myself having to split my efforts between making sure we don't miss a potential gift for Hanako, and making sure Lily doesn't inadvertently bump into anything. The task is quite difficult, given the haphazard way the store is laid out, and the many things poking out of the shelves they're sitting on are sitting on pieces of furniture, but eventually we arrive safely at an old desk covered in dolls and teddy bears. I think this is the right place. There's pretty much every kind of doll you can imagine here. That should make the choice much simpler. Could you please pick one for me, Sal? I have a feeling it would come to this. I picture Hanako in my mind and try to imagine which of the dolls before me which would suit her best. My eyes wander across the collection. Each one is exquisite as the one before it. Sheer number of styles is boggling, but eventually one catches my eye. Here, what about this one? I pick up a small porcelain doll that looks to be at least somewhat affordable, dressed in a Victorian era green dress. With a little brown hat sitting atop its blonde hair. It looks a little like Lily. I gently pass it to her, who delicately feels her way around the object while wearing a slight look of concentration. It certainly feels beautiful. Do you think it would suit Hanako in your opinion? I think it would. It could look good in her room. In that case, I'll trust your judgment. Would you be getting her something as well, or shall this be a shared gift? Uh, I'm not sure. I think I should get her something myself, but I don't think getting another doll is such a great idea. Maybe... I let my voice trail off as I look around the shop. Resting on a writing table not far from us is a decorative box that catches my eye. Wait here, I think I found something. My, my, that was fast. I gingerly walk through a collection of crystal glassware and pick up the box. The sides are covered in carvings depicting ancient battles around a castle. The top, however, looks far too familiar. Alternating squares of white and black varnished wood are arranged on the lid. That's a really nice item. It's a chest set from overseas. Door owner's sudden appearance stalled me a little. I didn't seem approaching at all. Especially trying to help us because we don't really look like we know what we're doing. Or, on the other hand, maybe he wants to keep an eye on us because he suspects we might shoplift instead. I'm, uh, I'm looking for a present for my friend. Hmm, I see. In that case, this chess set would make a fine choice. Visualization flies into my mind. This is a pretty good looking set. But this is an antique shop. They're not well known for their bargain prices. How old is this? This is a reproduction. Hmm, my best estimate is that is about five years old. I see how much. You think a little before telling me, which is slightly disconcerting. I'll, uh, I'll let you take this now for 7,000 yen. I balk a little. I wasn't expecting to spend that much, but this does seem perfect. Then again, maybe that's a testament to how well he worked out how much he would make me pay. Couldn't make it, uh, 5,000? 5,500. No lower. I'm sold. Oh, uh, we'd also like to get that doll. Stormer looks over my shoulder, focusing on Lily and the doll in her hands. His eyes narrow, and he visibly takes a moment to switch mental gears. In the process, his smile drops slightly. Ah. Uh, I guess that means not everything in this doll's reproduction. Are you, uh, quite sure you want that doll, miss? I trust my friend's judgment. I see. Oh, no offense. None taken. If you could please wrap it for me, it would be appreciated. Yes, of course, but, uh, it is 20,000 yen. Lily reaches into her purse and presents four crisp looking 5,000 yen notes. Here you are, 20,000 yen. Storekeeper, storekeeper dutifully tastes them in the doll and proceeds to the counter. I take Lily's arm to guide her there. Are you sure about this? It's okay, I have the funds I need. As I said, I trust your judgment. I feel a little guilty on two fronts. Firstly, because Lily has just spent a lot of money on my recommendation, and secondly, because I have a feeling the value of my gift isn't high enough. Nevertheless, Lily does seem to get somewhat awkward whenever the mention of money comes around. 
I hand the shopkeeper my present and the money for it in turn. He puts the cash into the register before busying himself with wrapping the doll and repeating the process on the chessboard. Eventually, he finishes gift wrapping and hands us both our presents. Please, be careful on your way back and do come again. Thanks. Indeed, thank you very much. Sorona bows deeply to us as we leave. Well, it did take us all day, but we found something in the end. That we did. Now that the presents are wrapped, I'm feeling a little impatient to give them to Hanako. It's a common reaction to buying gifts. Why just see the reaction of the receiver as they discover what it is? And part of me wants to return to Hanako, just to confirm her condition with my own eyes. So, should we head back? Let's. We've done a lot of walking today, so I shan't mind taking a rest back at the dormitories. Lee's well, right. Now that the need to find a shop is over, my legs are feeling quite tired. Well then, back to the school for us. I'm looking forward to resting for a bit too. Lee holds out her arm, and I link it with mine. Together, we make our way back to the bus stop. <sighs> We're just burning through it, you know? God. Muta reads equations and formulas to us one by one, in his usual unenthusiastic monotone directly from the book. It's possible that he might be excited about what he teaches us. Sometimes he can display an awkward spark of passion for it, as if he's starting to get into the material. Most days, however, are like this one. What we're covering is fairly simple, so I find it increasingly difficult to keep my concentration on him. It's not too long until my legs begin aching again, which only makes it even harder. I'm almost starting to regret walking around the city yesterday with Lily. Since leaving the hospital, I've done very little physical exertion. Walking to and from the local corner store hardly counts. Despite Emmy's attempts when I first arrived at Yamaku, I've largely given up on the idea of ever returning to my old level of fitness. I have little doubt that's why walking around town for so many hours has made me quite so sore. It's depressing. It reminds me of one more thing I can't do since I had my heart attack. It makes me feel pathetic. Now, uh, Ikazawa. It's odd for Mucho to ask Hanako a question, but not unheard of. She quickly jumps to her feet, a little startled, and immediately pins her eyes onto him. She knows that Muto calling on her is rare, so all eyes in the classroom are going to be on her. This way, she doesn't ruin, run the risk of making eye contact with anyone else. Y yes In this particular example of redox reaction, the combustion of methane reaction actually produces one more product than is listed. That product is... Even though it's a softball question, she timidly waits a little bit before answering biting slightly on her lower lip, as if to keep her concentration. Um... Heat? <laughs> well done. That is an exothermic reaction, with the reaction giving more heat than is put into it. Receiving a nod from Muto, Hanako takes a seat once again, and gives a relieved sigh. A shaky start, but it's something. It'll be nice to take her out for her birthday, somewhat different from the usual isolation of her room and the tea room. With the progress she's made until now, I don't think she'll have much of a problem getting to the city. Uh, you're quite optimistic, aren't you, Hasao? I, uh, I don't think that's how it's gonna work, but, uh, you know. Right then, uh, for the remainder of this class, I'd like you to work in groups of three or four on the problems in Chapter 12. I'll be here if you need me. Muto sits down behind his desk, pulls some loose sheets of paper out of a folder, and starts on some kind of paperwork of his own. I thought teachers were supposed to do that kind of thing after class, not during it. Regardless, I look to my right and pick out someone to form a group with. Given the two smiling faces hovering near mine, I don't think I'm going to get much say in the matter. Well, I suppose we have a group then. Hey, Chen, you want to work together? Okay, okay, that's great. It's really been a while. Class begins the process of noisily shuffling the desks around, which is in doing the same as she puts hers in front of mine. She's a little lucky to not being able to hear the din in the classroom, which is loud enough to cause some discomfort. Truth be told, working with Shizune and Misha is probably a good outcome. Shizune and I are pretty good at the subject, and Misha has really nice handwriting. As I look to Misha, I notice a tall figure behind her. The shadow catches Misha's attention as well, and she turns to face the dark-haired observer. Good afternoon, Hanako. Um, hello. She's in a finally notices Hanako, after looking up and following the gaze of Misha and I. In quick measure, she taps Misha on the shoulder to get her attention before standing away. shi Chen says, if you're looking for a group, you can join ours. Hanako looks down and blushes a little at the offer. Out of all people in their class, Hanako's most familiar with us three, so it's reasonable that she come to us first. Then again, her actually coming to a group with attention or joining them is something she apparently very rarely did before. She leaves briefly to drag her desk over, and Shizune and Misha wheel back to me as soon as her back is turned. Hmm? 
I guess we get to play again, Ichan. You hardly ever play with us anymore. I wonder why. You two always seem to have some kind of ulterior motive. Hmm. That hurt, Ichan. I almost think you were insulting me. But it's Ichan, so I know that you're joking. Such a great sense of humor about it. It'd be awful if someone were to take advantage of your good nature, like making you help them with their work. <laughs> Shizune seems excited for a second, a little surprised that I'm willing to challenge her. But when she sees Hanako coming back, she backs off with a smile. I guess the mind games are over early today. Hanako gently sets her desk in front of Misha's. Her eyes are locked downwards. I'm left wondering why until I look around the class. Most are busy setting up their own groups, but a few are casting curious glances at her. At this range, it's hard to tell whether that is their with their interest in her ends, or if they're talking about her as well. It's strange. No one bats an eyelid when Hanukkah runs out of classroom to avoid group work, but now that she's making an effort, they're staring at her as she's done something wrong. We all move to sort ourselves out, spreading our textbooks and worksheets around the larger surface created by the four joined decks. It isn't long before the class as a whole gets down to work. Hi, Hanako. It's nice to finally work with you. Yeah. Are you the reason He Chan has been avoiding us lately? She Chan says it's a little rude, but if He Chan wants to spend time with a cute girl, it's understandable. I. I. Uh, don't th think it's like that. Uncle starts to fidget, and uses this kind of attention. I think that an ordinary person would drop the conversation by now, but Misha's like the antithesis of Hanako. Part of that includes being blind to ordinary social cues, while Hanako was overly sensitive to them. Because of that, Misha barrels ahead with the questions, too quickly for me to get a chance to interject and guide the discussion to someone more comfortable. Really? So, he wasn't hanging out with you yesterday? N no. I can feel my cover being blown already. The Dumar Hanako didn't know that we were out buying presents for her, let alone planning out her birthday party. Wouldn't be good for her to find out. Yeah, I was, uh, doing something else. You know how it is. <laughs> 